What's up guys? I'm Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi and I'm here in my lab in Denver, Colorado. I wanted to show you how you could bypass um, auger and expand your cultures by utilizing liquid cultures. Um, so this is a liquid culture. It's just mycelium suspended in uh, liquid nutrients, which I use Bjorn's organic honey. Um, and essentially these can be refrigerated and stored uh, for a very long time so that's why I keep a lot of liquid culture on hand and um, I believe that they're a little bit faster for colonization and you can always you know put liquid directly into auger if um, you need to QC your liquid culture or if you're trying to um, store it for long term or just uh, reintroduce it into your grow. So um, I've got two different methods that I use. Um, I just wanted to show uh, a little bit of an easier method in case you don't have a laminar hood. Um, so I've got a, a pint size jar here and it's got this injection port which is perfect for liquid cultures with a, a gauged needle right there. So uh, the ports are nice because it keeps everything sterile um, and one of the problems with liquid cultures is it's so nutritious that a lot of competing organisms will um, contaminate it very quickly. So it's important that you have a clean liquid culture to begin with. Um, one of the easiest tests is to just observe it right right away so you can see how that liquid looks clear and then you can see the mycelium growing through it this is a a chestnut mushroom or foliota adiposa and um, one indication of bacterial and yeast contamination is that you will not be able to see through the liquid culture. It kind of looks cloudy or milky, I would say. And that's a, a, um, a contaminated culture, so you want to avoid that. Um, so yeah, this is a chestnut mushroom, and I'll show you guys how I inoculate my uh, spawn. So I like to use um, sawdust spawn intermittently, especially when I'm using liquid cultures. Um, I have a lot of reasons for that. I think that, you know, spawn is a, a great way to expand and the sawdust does not contaminate as easily as uh, some of the grain spawns and it's a lot cheaper. And um, I just believe that it stresses out the mushroom less when it's going from my, uh, my sawdust spawn into my bulk substrates. Um, so I'll go ahead and inoculate my chestnut um, to my pint liquid sawdust spawn. All right. Okay, so I hope you can get a good view here of what I'm working with. Um, I like to uh, use the lids upside down um, so that when I finish inoculating, I label with these dry erase markers. Uh, they work really well. So you can write uh, what strain and the date and all of uh, your tracking information on there. And then when you go to wash the jars, they rinse off really easily. So these lids will last me, you know, a couple years I get out of them um, until the top starts to degrade. Like it'll, it will rust through eventually. Um, but for this injection port, um, if you did not have a laminar hood, you could always just spray it with alcohol and let it dry um, and that's going to help keep that needle sterile or aseptic as it's going going into the culture so here's my pine size jar and then um, once again here's my liquid culture you can see how clear and healthy it is uh, the chestnut is kind of a little fluffier compared to some of the other mycelium like lion's mane tends to get really stringy so I'll just go ahead and open this up and 
Um, another thing that I do with my liquid cultures is you can see that there's a layer of parafilm on there. I like to include that as an extra precaution. Um, sometimes, you know, the cap could get loose or, and some people like to put screw caps on there, which is another good method. Um, but this eliminates, you know, taking off the, the needle or the screw cap and reapplying it, which that could contaminate the, the liquid culture. But you can see right there how healthy this culture looks. And the first thing you, you should always do is um, shake them. Or if you have a vortexer, it's really nice. So you could just pop it on the vortexer. But this looks like a really healthy culture and um, it should go go pretty smoothly. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off that parafilm layer and I'm going to try to do that without removing the needle from the base. Alright, so now that that's off, um, I'll take the cap off the needle and the alcohol is dried. So if you do not have a laminar hood like I'm doing right now, you can use a lighter or a alcohol flame and sterilize the needle at this point. And then you want to uh, cool it off, but because I just opened this and it's sterile, I'm gonna go ahead and inoculate into that port. So it's pretty easy, you, you just wanna put the needle in and I always, try to aim for the sides and for a pint sized jar 10 mils is a perfect amount so while I was inoculating I was trying to aim in all four sides so that the mycelium will kind of drain out and then after it begins to colonize you can always shake shake the substrate but this is a really fast strain so it will probably colonize in a week um, and then from here I will go ahead and label it so and there you have it um, so when I'm doing a larger amount of uh, jars over here I've got you know a bunch of spawn that I'm about to prepare I like to use these larger bore gauges um, and they also hold 60 mils so I can get about six or seven jars out of one of these and they're nice because you know you don't have to work with a sharp tip and They come with a nice cap, um, but that's some, some lion's mane in there. See how stringy that mycelium is? But once again, um, you, can see, you can see clearly through this liquid culture, so I know that it's clean. But yeah, so for the larger syringes, I'll just go ahead and unscrew this cap off and you can see some air bubbles in there. Um, that'll be okay. And then I'll go ahead and take one of my half pint size and just give it a little squirt. Set that off to the side. Go to my next lid. And you know, that way I can produce a lot of spawn in a pretty short period of time. And another thing I like about these uh, syringes is that they are um, re-autoclavable, so I can actually reuse these a couple times. That last little little squirt's gonna be pretty chunky. I always like 
those ones. Niagara Falls, Lion's Mane. And I'm indicating the LC1 because this is a first generation liquid culture. So I tend to uh, pull from, you know, my G1's liquid culture. And um, that way when I initiate these on the plates, it keeps the, uh, the, the lineage going. And then I can always go back to my original liquid culture and um, as long as I'm careful and then it doesn't get contaminated, then, you know, that liquid culture can produce uh, limitless amounts of mushrooms. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on how you could bypass auger. Um, I love to use liquid cultures. It's one of my favorite methods to expand my cultures for production. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to email me. I'm pretty good at, about email. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are looking for more um, educational content about mycology and uh, growing mushrooms, then subscribe and spread the word. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I really, really enjoy teaching about growing mushrooms and um, look forward to adding some more content coming up here. So much love.